translation Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 18. The message translation. The ways of right living people glow with light. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. Tell your neighbor, Mrs. Adejuma is speaking about me. She just, she just spoke about me. You better open your mouth and say it. That's me. That's me. Point to the screen and tell your neighbor, that's me. Can you leave that, can you leave that scripture, please, on the screen for me? Tell your neighbor, the longer I live, and tell that person, I'm not going anywhere yet. Now, if you are too silent, you will be silenced. A silent Christian is a silenced Christian. Don't allow things, circumstances, situations to silence you. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, before David threw the stone, he first spoke. I love wrestling. It's my favorite game. So when Undertaker is coming and he's saying, today I'm going to kill you. Triple H will not stop. He also will speak. Life is a battle for territories. You speak. You don't keep quiet. I say, you know, I'm gentle. No, the devil will deal with you. Open your mouth and say, the longer I live. And I'm not going anywhere yet. A thousand may fall on my right hand. Ten thousand may be killed on my left hand. But I'm not going anywhere yet. The longer I live, the brighter I will shine. The angels of God have taken what you just said now to God and it's been stamped. I'm sharing just a few things with you this morning on a message I have titled Wisdom for your next level. Wisdom for your next level. Wisdom is the principal thing. You can have strength. You can have wealth. You can have health. You can have anything. But if you lack wisdom, you have lacked the school principal. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom for the next level. God expects you to live long. But the Bible says, the longer you live, the brighter you are supposed to shine. God does not expect you to have a better yesterday. And success leaves clues. Just like failure also leaves clues. The first thing I'd like to tell you this morning as a wisdom gem is... Always acknowledge the mercy of God. Always acknowledge the mercy of God. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse number 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great it is faithfulness. In everything you do, if you're going to shine, this is a wisdom gem for your next level. Always, 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 always acknowledge the mercy of God. I love the beautiful lady that shared her testimony this morning. At a point, she didn't even know what next to sing. She laid on the floor. She's a director in the ministry. Some of you don't even have a job yet. Some of you, you still have your school start. You are on your way to the top. This is a top most official, government official. And then publicly, in the presence of hundreds of people, because let me remind you, I've said this over and over and over and over again. God will step back to see your response to his last act in your life. The last thing God did for you, he steps back to look at your response and your reaction. Then he will convince himself that you deserve the next one. A lot of people are stranded today because they are ungrateful people. They are proud ingrates. Go to
to the mug, the mortuary, and see the people that are better than you are. There's one young man. Somebody spoke to my husband about him recently. I think last week. If you're observant, he walks to and fro in this Akure city, sometimes naked. Let me shock you. He is a medical doctor. His parents live here. Two of them are mad. Same mother, same father. Medical doctor. How many medical doctors? What's the percentage of medical doctors that we have in the world? So you know what that means. That young man that you see as a mad person along these streets. Mother and I have started praying for him. I have a burden to continue to pray for him. Until one day I will hear a testimony. Naked. He's a medical doctor. What are you carrying that you are missed? And then praise worship time in church. You will sit down, cross your leg. You put your hand in your pocket. You can't even praise God. God will step back and look at his last act in your life. What he did for you on October 4. What he did for you April 9. What he did for you last week. To see your reaction and your response. Then he will convince himself whether you deserve the next one. That's why many people, you will see that they are the ones giving testimonies every time. Every time because God is convinced about them. He sees the way they dance in church. He sees everything about them. This is wisdom for you. If you want to continue to move to the next level, and the next level, and the next level, and the next level. This is it. Because my husband is not home, so I didn't even sleep in the house today. Where I slept, even heaven knows that somebody knows how to worship him. Even the angels, I'm sure they will be telling God, tell her to stop now. I will look at this one and I will thank him. I will remember this and I will thank him. The secret of champions is in their stories. How grateful are you? And you know one thing, I'm a life coach. How you do one thing is how you do all things. If you're ungrateful to God, you'll be ungrateful to people. You'll be very assuming. You will have this entitlement mentality. People will help you and you will think it's your right. It's not your right. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For his compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. We are what we are by the grace of God. Psalm 104 verse 28. Thou openest thy arms. It is what God gives that we gather. If he doesn't open his hands, we will not be able to gather anything. Have you gathered anything? Give him thanks. Be grateful unto him. Acknowledge his mercies. Number two, be clear about your direction in life. You are not called to everybody. You can't own everything. You can't do everything. You can't have everything. You can't help everybody. So be clear. Let there be clarity. About your direction in life. Where are you going? Why are you here? What are you here to do? What? I'd like you to know that you are not a biological accident. Neither are you a mistake. God is fantastically strategic about you. Yes, he is. Discover your purpose and stay with it. When this ministry first started, I'd never been a pastor's wife before. I've never been a pastor. I didn't know what it means to be a pastor's wife. My husband is a perfect gentleman. He's phlegmatic. I'm choleric. The ministry was young. And I will look at him and copy him. I'm very expressive. So I will try to be quiet. Suddenly I will speak. Then I will remember that I'm copying somebody. Then I will begin. 
I love to tell you my mind. I don't like to keep you in my mind. So when you offend me, I like to express it. My husband is more mature. I'm also growing. This is funny because he was canceling a couple in town a few days ago. And he brought out this example. I remember many years ago, maybe about 33 years ago, we had a misunderstanding. Mother and I, yes. We still do once in a while, but now our marriage is 36 years, so the times of misunderstanding have reduced drastically. But that time, I was a very bad pastor's wife. And we couldn't resolve it on Saturday evening. He thought we had resolved it. So we woke up in the morning on Sunday. And he said, okay, darling, let's go to church. I said, I'm not going to church. He said, what did you say? He said, I'm not going to. Is it God you are fighting with on me? I said, I don't care. I'm not going to church. I have not said my mind. Ah, my husband noticed that this is becoming serious. So he begged me. He said, oh, let's go to church. Let's go to church. You cannot implicate me. Young pastor, young ministry, let's go to church. I think the ministry was about one year old. Let's go to church. So I came to church. I was still moody. And when I got to church, I faced my God. Thank you, thank you. My eyes were closed almost throughout. Thank you, Lord. I'm worshiping you. You are my God, my Father who has heaven. And then my husband moved close to me. And he whispered into my ears and said, Darling, can you be a bit more cheerful? And I put my mouth very close to his ears and I said to him, I can never pretend. <laughs> we were still worshipping the Lord and I was worshipping my own God. Then he came back and he said, You are not pretending, it's a sign of maturity. Okay, I'm sorry again. We will say too little at home. <laughs> I won't do that anymore. The longer I live, the brighter I shine. At a point, I was frustrated. And I was equally frustrating him. And maybe frustrating the few members in church. So I decided to be me. And God brought my mentor, my mother, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo into my life at that point in my life. That woman, no other woman has impacted my life like that beautiful woman of God. I spoke to her a few days ago. Be yourself. There's no need pretending to be another person. We don't need two Felix Adejumas. He's the best for what he's called to do. I'm not a pastor. I don't have the patience of a pastor. I can't listen to you for one hour. My husband can listen to you for six hours. He is called. I'm a pastor's wife. That's why it's wrong for you to call me Pastor Funke. I'm not a pastor. And I won't pretend about it. So why are you frustrating yourself trying to be somebody else? Grow, mature, but stay in your lane. Discover who you are and love it. Job chapter 12 and verse number 3. What you know, I know. I am not inferior to you. Job chapter 13 and verse number 2. What you know, I know. I am not inferior to you. It's repeated in the Bible two times. You're not inferior to anybody. I'm not taking back seats. I like that message translation. Be yourself. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Good. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also, but also, but also, when I was reading that scripture, but also caught my attention and it caught my fancy, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. No vessel is inferior to another. You may be gold, I may be wood. You are not superior to me. What is important is, if I'm a wood, I must be a wood unto honor. Because it's possible for you to be a gold unto dishonor. So please stop bragging. You may well have what I don't have, 
but I also have what you don't have. Balance. The equation is, is solved. So just understand this, that no vessel makes itself. I didn't make myself to have this kind of height. So if you are tall, it means nothing to me. I'm in competition with only one person on this earth, and that's me. To be a better version of me every day as I wake up. If you are shorter than I am, it is your business. You are fatter, it is your business. It's not my business. Love yourself, like yourself, honor yourself, celebrate yourself. Refuse to allow anybody put you down. Hear me. You may not be able to make people respect you, but don't allow people to disrespect you. It's their business if they don't want to respect you, but don't allow them to disrespect you. You disrespect me. It's one of my core values. Honor, respect. You disrespect me, I move back. Emotionally, I shut down. The Bible says, walk away from a fool. And I put in my Bible, that's why you have your legs. I won't let you disrespect me. I've, I've given you a long rope. You still won't do it. You keep hurting me. I will never collaborate with you. You are my prosecutor in the court of law. No. So do not allow anybody disrespect you. Stay in your lane. There is no purposeless vessel. Everything happens. As I was writing my notes, even the cover of my pen has a purpose. My speck has a purpose. My handkerchief has a purpose. If I carry my Bible and I'm using it to wipe my face, won't you say something is wrong with Bishop's wife? My phone has a purpose. There is no purposeless vessel. An understanding of this will help you enjoy life. Don't let anybody coerce you into becoming what God didn't create you to be. Grow, stretch, but don't let anybody change your DNA. Number three, accelerate. 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 Make progress. It is wrong for you to stay on the same spot. Year in, year out. When did we say Happy New Year? You're going to look at your wristwatch and it will be Christmas. Accelerate. In life, travel distance is constant. But the mode is the determinant. If you want to go to Lagos, the distance, the kilometers, is constant. But the mode of traveling, which will determine the number of hours. So if you go driving a car, or you go by train, we're talking about the mode, or you fly, all things being equal, forget about those demonic traffics. Lagos will take you three or four hours if you drive a good car. If you drive the kind of car my son and I were driving 30 years ago, it may take you 10 years. When you have to bind the devil in the throttle, bind the devil in the brake, and bind everything before you start. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus, as we are traveling now, every demon, there's no demon on my way as I'm traveling. There are some cars that when the devil sees it, too early. <laughs> you can pass, sir. It's not you we are waiting for, sir. You can Because even the tires, you know, there are, lev there are levels of light. Some electricity, you can plug your phone. Some electricity can shock you. You say, yeah, who shocked me? But some will not even allow you to come. Those Nepa, Transformer, whatever. There are, some, there are some life that the devil knows that you can pass. May yours continue to be that. When your prayer will not be binding the devil, binding the devil every minute. What are you binding? No. It's the, ch the children's meat. Wealth is your meat. Sound health is your meat. Life does not give you what you want. Life gives you who you are. 
develop who you are. You wake up in the morning and then you're feeling somehow. Press the pause button. No, 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 no. This is the day the Lord has made. I refuse to be down. My bank account is not me. It is my bank account. I own it. You don't let anything external determine how you feel about yourself. Not at all.